Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome, and thank you very much for taking a few minutes out of your day to, to join us. Today, we're going to talk about uh, optimizing engineering workflows for propulsion design, specifically uh, around turbo pumps. So um, there's going to be a live Q&A at the end. And then if you want to post questions, there's a, there's a chat window and a Q&A window down at the bottom of the Zoom session. You can select either of those and, uh, and, and, and post whatever you'd like to in, in each of those. We appreciate that. Um, also, if, if, if you miss anything, don't worry about it. We're going to send this out as a recording um, shortly after we're complete. Okay. Thanks very much. Um, at the end, there may be a survey, and we would appreciate it if you'd uh, if you jump into that survey and let us know how we did. We're always trying to tighten these up, and if we can um, if we can get your feedback, that would be much 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 appreciated. Thanks very much. So today, there's going to be four people speaking today. Um, the most important one uh, is, is uh, Professor Murdad Zangini. Um, he is a professor at the college, uh, University College in, in London, longtime turbo machinery expert, 120 patents, 100, or seven patents, 120 papers, uh, generally world renowned in his field. Um, the second big brain in the, on, on, on the program is uh, Dr. Li Ying Zhang who also works with ADT. And the third big brain on the program is Miles Atkins, who works for Flonix, uh, PDT, and is uh, quite skilled in the term machinery side of this business. Go ahead, Miles. Next, next slide. And there they are. Um, so go ahead, Miles, next. So what we want to talk about is optimizing engineering workflows for um, turbo pump systems, okay? And what we've, we've all seen the videos, the grainy videos of rockets blowing up on launch pads and failed uh, execution of uh, various kinds of rocketry in the past. And what always was the case was these guys were sort of throwing things together and, and it would launch and it would blow up and then they'd, they'd do a postmortem and, they'd, and they'd, they'd, they'd figure out what the heck went wrong and then they'd try again. And we think it'd be amazing if there was a way to sort of have an informed feedback loop instead, where you could shorten development timelines, where you could have confidence in system performance because you could model the entire system performance. And when we could maybe reduce those failures or at least try to get the failures down to zero. We do that through um, a feedback loop system, right? You see a solid rocket booster from ATK uh, and you see the corresponding analysis of that below. And what you end up with is a system design that has a scenario and some components. And those things come together um, using a proper modeling system like Flonex to develop feedback loops for the system. So we're gonna talk about those right now today. Um, go to the next slide if you don't mind, Miles. We're gonna do all this in the context of uh, the RS-25 uh, rocket engine, which is also known as the space shuttle main engine. And what we've got is an entire ecosystem of that engine built in uh, Flonex, ADT, and CFX. So, Miles, if you don't mind, spend a few minutes showing us how this system works. Sure thing. I assume you guys can hear me now. Um, so, so yeah. So, what what Jim is talking about is is we really want our uh, you know system design incorporated earlier in the design timeline. Um, we want you know, the, the behavior of the system to inform the design of the components. And, and we want that, you know, as a complete feedback loop so that as our component design changes, you know, we're constantly updating that system design. Uh, in, in having these, you know, informed design loops, you know, it, it uh, gives us, you know, the best possible design. Um, in, in this, you know, in today's webinar, what we're really looking at is, the RS-25 rocket engine, which we have here, this is the uh, space shuttle main engine, as, as Jim mentioned. And um, what we're using for the system model of that engine is uh, Flonex simulation environment. Uh, Flonex simulation environment is a 1D fluid flow and 2D heat transfer network solver. Um, you build your uh, thermal fluid network out of a variety of different flow and heat transfer components, uh, which you can see in the libraries over here to the right. 
uh, for the RS-25 rocket engine. Um, we have uh, you know, our, our fuel and our oxidizer coming in the inlets. We capture our, our, set our losses using these flow resistance components. We have components for the pumps. We have turbines. We have uh, the turbines connected to the pumps uh, via shafts so that we can actually capture inertia for startup and, and shutdown uh, and changing transients. Um, Flonex does model two-phase as well as gas mixtures. Uh, we can model combustion using the NASA adiabatic flame model or also known as the Gordon McBride program. And what this does is, you know, it gives us an idea of how that that full system is going to behave. And, and what we really want to do is, is we want to use that to inform that component design. Um, you know, as is right now, we have some kind of simplified representations of some of these components. Uh, but, you know, by creating those feedback loops, we can make our model much more informed. Uh, Flonex actually has a couple of different ways that we can create those feedback loops. We can use the functional mock-up interface uh, uh, to facilitate a coupling between uh, Flonex and another tool. This is also sometimes known as FMI or FMU. Uh, we can easily set up a uh, text file link between uh, Flonex and another tool. Um, and we have native couplings to the ANSYS products. So if you want to represent some component in a 3D uh, uh, realm, uh, you can simply you know, drag and drop a ANSYS fluent or CFX or even mechanical if you're doing some kind of thermal or, or structural analysis and send uh, boundary conditions, uh, flow characteristics uh, back and forth in, in a true transient coupling between the two tools. And so what this is really allowing us to do is uh, to, to give us you know, the most accurate uh, full, full system model. And by implementing this earlier in that uh, design timeline, you know, we are going to shorten the development timeline. We're gonna have more confidence in the system performance. And we're hopefully gonna you know, reduce those failures down because we uh, capture it with a high degree of accuracy. Back to you, Jim. Wow, that's awesome. Um, but you know, that's a system level thing. What if we wanted to uh, reduce the size or complexity of a given component, a, cert a certain element, so that we can maybe mm -hmm. optimize a particular component for either whether it's design efficiency or we need to tune it for cost or um, some other you know, design metric for a given component? How does that get done? in the context of that entire feedback loop and system level design? Gotcha. That's, that's a good question. So one of the ways that we can do that within Flonex, and I'll, I'll show this to you here, is there's, there's a few different um, uh, design and analysis tools that are available to us. So within this, as it, as it pertains to the rocket model, um, as I mentioned before, right now we have some kind of simplified uh, components that, that build up our network. And, and in fact, this, uh, this high pressure oxidizer pump, which is what we're specifically looking at today, um, we're, we're using a basic centrifugal pump component. And in Flonex, that means that we're, uh, we, we may not have a pump chart yet. We don't know exactly uh, how, uh, you know, we haven't finalized the design on that pump. And so what we can do is we can put in some you know, best efficiency point uh, conditions and let the tool extrapolate outside of that range. Um, so really we're kind of looking at that single point. However, to take this a step further, if I isolate, I think I have a slide on this. So if I was to isolate that, that pump in its own network, um, I can actually change some of the settings on it. So what I, what I can do here is I have my upstream and downstream boundary conditions. I know that I have a specific RPM that's available to me, this uh, 22,250. And I can check this box for fixing the mass flow and choose to change design to target a specific mass flow. So if I put in, let me um, put in zero values here. So right now, if I if I start with with no values for that pump, 
pump and I have the box check to design for mass flow, I can solve it. And you'll notice that the values for head at best efficiency point and volume flow at best efficiency point are calculated automatically. Um, so this is, this is one way that we can use uh, these system tools to, to target a specific um, design characteristic and, and let our tools kind of do the work for us. There is uh, a couple other tools within Flonex, uh, the designer, uh, which works like GoalSeek in Excel, or the optimizer, which is similar to GoalSeek, but we're seeking to minimize or maximize. Uh, and in these tools, it's actually really cool. I can grab a, uh, a, a, a flow uh, characteristic here. So if I was designing for a specific mass flow, I can drag and drop that as a quality constraint. And then I can pick some geometric or operational input as an independent variable. And Flonex will actually run uh, a bunch of different uh, inputs seeking to reach that equality constraint. So if I was searching for you know, 93 pounds per second, and I know that that uh, flow admins needs to be somewhere between you know, zero and one, I can let Flonex do that work for me and determine what that characteristic is. And this could be, you know, diameters and flow rates. This could be, uh, you know, material thickness and a bulk fluid temperature when we're, when we're capturing a, uh, uh, you know, a, a flow network with convection to ambient or something like that. Um, the optimizer works very similar to the designer, which is a uh, goal seek, except the optimizer is going to seek to either minimize or maximize that fitness variable or result variable. Uh, so we can search, search or set up a scenario to study, you know, what input we need to maximize flow rate, uh, minimize temperature, maximize thrust, things like that. We can set all those studies up, um, you know, at the system level to uh, get the optimal design of our system. Now, once I have uh, found that best efficiency point characteristics for this turbo pump, I may need to go to a 3D tool to uh, kind of drill down that design even further. And so I will actually hand it off to uh, Professor Murdad so that he can explain how we would do this in Turbo Design. Thank you, Miles. Uh, good morning, everyone. Good afternoon if you're in Europe. So as Miles explained, uh, basically with Flonex, uh, you can get an uh, initial model of the whole system. And um, what is interesting is, is it possible to get a 3D geometry and uh, verify that uh, those conditions can be met uh, with a real pump stage. Um, and of course, uh, uh, maybe we can also look at the operation at different operating points, et cetera. But initially, what is important is, is can we actually come up with a three-dimensional stage quickly that gives the duty points required. And so here, what I'm uh, showing here on the left-hand side, let me actually go to the laser pointer. So uh, you, are, you see the, the head, the volume flow rate, the efficiency of this uh, main oxidizer pump um, uh, for the RS25 engine. And um, uh, based on these conditions, uh, actually on the specific speed charge, you can see where uh, the pump sits. This is actually a double suction pump. We are looking at uh, essentially uh, using symmetry, one half of it, but uh, it gives you an idea of what uh, the specific speed is. Uh, and what we do is with Table Design Suite, we can actually get this basic information, go uh, to a very simple process, to generate the three-dimensional state geometry. So initially, uh, we go through uh, Table Design 3, which is a, a initial mean line design code. So all it needs is uh, you, exactly the information coming from Flonex, uh, head, uh, uh, RPM, uh, flow rate. And with that basic information, uh, Table Design 3 uh, uh, estimates uh, uh, the flow path, so things like tip diameter, uh, the volute uh, geometry, the uh, impeller geometry, uh, 
basic uh, flow path, uh, meridional geometry, not the 3D geometry. The 3D geometry will come later using the three-dimensional inverse design method. But initially, you have to establish a flow path. And then uh, also, Table Design Pre can very quickly give you, uh, based on empirical uh, estimates, uh, a characteristic of this pump stage. In fact, later on, I'll show you comparison of this uh, predicted characteristics from Table Design Pre versus actually 3D predictions coming from uh, full stage CFD. And uh, what this shows is uh, at different speeds, uh, so assuming uh, the speeds could vary, uh, the HQ characteristic of the pump, but of, co of course you also get efficiency and power. So once you have this mean line uh, geometry, the next stage is to create the 3D uh, uh, impeller, or if you have inducer, which you would normally would have to have uh, for cavitation performance, and inducer, uh, the inducer geometry as well. And this is where we actually use our unique uh, system, the three dimensional uh, inverse design method. So, what this three dimensional inverse design uses as basic input is, of course, your main design parameters, RPM, flow rate, head that that was the basic requirements coming from Flonex that was actually also put into the Tevozyme Pre to get the flow path. It also needs a flow path, which of course Tevozyme Pre has already given. And uh, given this basic data, you then specify some um, aerodynamic parameters. This is why we call it inverse design, because you don't actually, the normal conventional design processes you have to somehow estimate a, a, a geometry uh, based on maybe some blade angle uh, distribution and then keep iterating with CFD. What is nice about the inverse design process is that actually you impose the span-wise um, uh, swell at inlet and exit of blade row. So if you're designing, uh, uh, for example, inducer or an impeller, you would know uh, at the inlet of an impeller maybe, uh, and at the inlet of an inducer maybe the uh, swell is zero. At the exit of it, you need a certain uh, work distribution, certain head split between impeller and, uh, uh, and inducer. And based on that, you come up with the swell distribution from an Euler equation. You know that the specific work or the Euler head is uh, directly related to RPM times change in RV theta. And in this way, by imposing a certain arbitrator, you already fix uh, the oil ahead, the specific, uh, 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 the specific work of the blade row. Uh, one useful thing about the fact that you're imposing the spinal's arbitrator is that uh, uh, you actually uh, can ensure ma good matching between inducer and impeller. You can use the same spinal's arbitrator at the exit of the inducer to be used at the inlet of the impeller, and that ensures good matching between components, very important for uh, this type of application. And then what's the other interesting aspect of inverse design is, is that you use uh, the blade loading uh, to control the blade shape, the streamwise blade loading. And the streamwise blade loading directly relates to the pressure jump across the blade. So uh, actually uh, what, what this blade loading does, it controls essentially this is the static pressure distribution. It, it's the difference between the pressure surface and suction surface pressure distribution. And by controlling this, you get really direct control over cavitation performance and also over the, um, uh, over the, uh, uh, the whole three-dimensional pressure field and the viscous behavior. And what's interesting about this design process is that um, you actually, once you impose these values, uh, the program very quickly calculates the three-dimensional blade shape, and also it gives you very uh, accurate uh, static pressure distribution that compares very well to uh, to CFD. So uh, I think uh, you can see a comparison of the uh, static pressure between TD1 and CFX in this case. It's it's a it's a compressor case, but in general uh, we always tend to get very good. Uh, comparison of uh, self-static pressure between TD1 and CFD. And this feature is something that can help you uh, to rank designs in terms of cavitation. But if I go back to this, I've got a very quick movie 
showing you the setup. Once you actually impose your blade loading, this is showing you the blade loading on the impeller. It shows that a geometry is actually generated from scratch. Uh, you see the development of the geometry. And then once the, this is converged, you can actually inspect the geometry. You can see it in a whole analysis. And also you can inspect the loading, the static pressure distribution. So for example, in this case, you see that uh, uh, both the inducer and the impeller are uh, maintaining uh, static pressure above two megapascal for which for liquid oxygen gives us a good margin in terms of cavitation. And then you can also export the geometry in terms of uh, CFD, either table grid for meshing or uh, uh, I just sort of step or FEA for FEA analysis. Okay, so once you have the 3D uh, inducer and impeller geometry, uh, you want to go and design, of course, the casing. And uh, uh, we have a uh, we have a module for the casing design, which um, is Tebuzine Volute, and uh, this also gets most of the information it needs in terms of the radius at the inlet of the casing, the width at the exit of the impeller, all of this can come from Tebuzine Pre. And um, uh, basically the only thing it needs is variation of VR and theta at inlet to the volute to design the 3D volute shape. Uh, you can specify uniform values, uh, sort of constant values coming from Tebuzine Pre, or you can actually uh, impose variation, circumferential variation of the R and the theta, and then this would give you more optimized uh, area variation for your volute. Uh, Tebuzine volute automatically calculates the uh, the um, uh, uh, geometry, the area variation, and then it outputs an IGES file, a watertight IGES file that you could immediately bring to, CA to CFD uh, without doing uh, complicated, time-consuming CAD, uh, um, CAD work. And also it can be completely scripted using an XML file, so if you want to do, include that in the optimization process. So, once you finish this step, you get the whole 3D geometry. So here I'm showing you the resulting uh, 3D geometry of the inducer, impeller, and casing generated as part of this process. So obviously what we now want to do is take this design and evaluate it for full state CFD, uh, high fidelity CFD to see if uh, we are actually meeting the requirements uh, that we need uh, specified uh, from the system model that Flonex gave us. And at this point, uh, we can actually go uh, to the uh, system uh, ANSYS workbench. We have a very good integration of table design inside ANSYS workbench. And so what you can do uh, here, I'm showing a model of just the impeller and inducer. And uh, what you can see is that you can actually automatically pass all the data to turbo grid or ANSYS unstructured meshing. And you can then uh, evaluate the performance uh, in terms of, uh, obviously this is single operating point, but you can also look at multiple operating points. That's something that we'll show you uh, later on uh, for a more detailed uh, inspection of uh, this process. But the whole process can be automated by the coupling that we have between Table Design 1 and ANSYS Workbench. And you can also do uh, structural analysis uh, in this process. So uh, here I'm just showing just uh, simply some of the setup. You can see uh, the, the mesh that was used for the impeller, uh, for the inducer, impeller, and volute. And uh, in total, we use, uh, use a single channel model of the induced and impeller uh, and about uh, 5.2 million mesh and using SSD turbulence model. And actually we did the CFD in two phase uh, using a rally plus model. So based on this uh, two phase CFD analysis, uh, we actually found that this uh, basic design that we generated very quickly by uh, putting the basic inputs coming from Flonex into Turbo Design Suite, uh, we actually found that we meet the target head. There is a bit of a margin because 
in this case, uh, we did not model the impact of, uh, we, we didn't model the um, leakage paths that you normally have uh, in a shrouded uh, pump configuration like this. So, um, uh, 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 so the, we need a bit of margin and there is actually uh, a bit of margin here in this design. And uh, we are also meeting in terms of power, the requirements, the, the efficiency is exceeding the flow next requirements uh, efficiencies. So uh, we can go in deeper and we can look at the detailed flow fit through CFX results. And what is interesting is we can see 10%, 50%, 90% span. There's really very good matching between the inducer and the impeller. And this, of course, uh, uh, explains why we, we could meet the very good efficiency and the good cavitation performance throughout the... So uh, in this 3D plot, you can actually see the region of uh, the cavitating region uh, just at the inlet of the inducer, but nowhere else could we actually observe much cavitation. And then, uh, of course, uh, ultimately, uh, we repeated this process at some other operating points from this full state CFT. And what is interesting at that sing, uh, simple uh, design speed line, we are actually uh, showing that it, it looks like the uh, original TD pre prediction wasn't really that bad. It gave a very good starting point and it matches very well with this uh, 3D estimate, considering that there is a little bit of margin because of the fact that we haven't included the leakage models in the CFT analysis. Okay, so now that you have an initial design, of course, one of the big problems in designing um, uh, uh, designing um, uh, uh, rocket uh, turbo pumps is making sure that you can uh, come up with a design that reduces weight and space. Weight and space are the biggest issues in design of turbo pumps. You want to hit the same duty point but perhaps uh, with reduced weight and uh, reduced uh, volume. And so what we looked at is to see whether we could actually meet uh, the same requirements, but uh, reducing the impeller diameter by 5%. And uh, actually, uh, we repeated exactly the same process going through the Tebozyme uh, 1 for 3D inverse design of the, volute, of the inducer and the impeller, and then Tebozyme volute to create a new volute designs. And in fact, uh, we could come up with a new compact design. Uh, this 5% reduction in, um, uh, in the impeller tip diameter actually resulted in about 3.3% reduction in volume. And typically with turbo pumps, uh, reduction of volume and mass are almost equivalent. So that should really uh, end up uh, with a reduction in mass of about 3.3%. And uh, of course, what's important is does this meet the, the requirements in terms of uh, uh, duty points that uh, uh, the system needs based on the flow net uh, prediction. And so here I'm showing you running uh, the, um, uh, the ANSYS workbench model of this new compact design. And uh, in fact, we find that uh, this new compact design is uh, showing a higher stage head uh, and quite reasonable efficiency, only small reduction in efficiency. And uh, overall, we are meeting the basic uh, duty points. And also, we don't see very much increase in uh, cavitation, even though we've made the design more compact. So to summarize, really, this step of going from basic 1D flow next uh, duty points to a 3D stage, and then verifying that 3D performance in a high fidelity CFD. What we showed is the coupling of uh, table design suite uh, with, uh, 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 first of all, table design suite enables you to very rapidly generate a 3D geometry that meets the flow next requirement, the whole stage in com com uh, combination, which includes inducer, impeller, and volute. Uh, you can, uh, come up with this uh, geometry that optimizes performance in terms of efficiency and suction performance. We saw that with the verification uh, from uh, uh, ANSYS workbench. And also, you can also very quickly look at coming up with more compact designs. If, for example, space and weight 
uh, is as which is always the case an important uh, requirement. So I think at this point I want to pass the presentation to Jim or Miles to look at more of design behavior. How do we bring in uh, the impact of uh, the actual variation? Yeah, that's great. Thank you very much, Dr. Zangini. So you, I mean, you showed us in that little, uh, uh, that vignette that you did, how to shorten our development timelines uh, in optimizing a given component. Um, when we do things like that, uh, we develop a whole lot of confidence in the system performance. And, uh, and that's a fabulous thing. But you know, at, at the end of the day, guys, we're not here to design to a static test. Um, we're, we're not designing a rocket uh, to live fire. Uh, you know, we're, we're designing this thing to function across from sea level to orbit, um, across a whole bunch of design points. So we need to find a way to do some kind of, <clears throat> let's call it uh, metaphorical tolerance stacking of the system or some way to run a very involved Monte Carlo simulation so that we can drive thousands of variables at a time. And th this will allow us, hopefully, to predict non-nominal operations because, you know, every now and again, there is something that is not nominal. And so we need to understand the interdependence between all the components of the system. And uh, we would call that something like uh, simulating the envelope or expanding the operational envelope of, of the system. So, uh, Miles, what can you tell us about how we would push the edges of this thing out and find out where the edges are? Sure thing. Yeah, what we what we want to do, I, I really like that kind of the metaphor of the tolerance stack. What we want to understand is, you know, the operation stack. So, you know, there each of these different components that makes up that RS25 is going to have some associated range of component or range of operation to it. So if we're looking just at say that that high pressure oxidizer pump, uh, we can actually take the information that we got from ADT Turbo Design Suite and apply it to that Flonex model. So what I've done here is we're, we were looking at that isolated model again, but rather than using that basic centrifugal pump where we only have that one point of operation, we can instead swap it out with a variable speed pump. And so what I've done here is I, I swapped it out and then we imported the pump charts that we got from ADT. So here we have, you know, pressure rise versus uh, volume flow for a variety of RPMs for that range of operation. Uh, we did the same thing with the hydraulic efficiency data. And what I can do now is, is implement that in a, in a simplified model here. I can solve this guy transiently. And you can see in the, in the corner here, because Flonex runs on that implicit pressure correction algorithm, it, it solves very, very quickly. And I can actually interact with my model. I've added a couple sliders here and some graphs. And so I can move this thing around and see transiently, you know, how that operation point is changing as we vary the RPM on it. And now the next step is we want to, again, keep those feedback loops. And so what I want to do is implement that in the system model. So I can do that, you know, simply by importing that pump chart into the full RS25 model. And I've done that here already. I actually just left the old component in, but I disabled solving on it. And so I can uh, run this guy transiently. And you can see here, you know, our thrust profile changing over time. I've also dragged and dropped in a, uh, a pump chart so we can see where our uh, chart is operating or where our pump is operating there. And um, as uh, I vary the valve lift on the valve, which controls both the uh, fuel and oxidizer going into the pre-combustor chambers, I can move this guy around and actually see, you know, the transient response. And so, you know, again, to, to tie this back, what we're really doing is we want to understand how the whole system is going to interact for the variety of operational conditions. Uh, I've actually had this atmospheric pressure slider down here too, so I can move the pressure slider to represent 
the rocket being operated at different altitudes and see how that, that thrust value is changing. Um, so there's, there's a lot of variety here. And a, and a next step may be to uh, connect it with even like a mission scenario. Uh, so in Flonex, we can, I'll pause my simulation here. In Flonex, we can set up transient scenarios where we have some, uh, some inputs in the model changing over time, either as a function of, uh, you know, uh, just as a step function, it could be a linear function. We actually have a, a cool table uh, value type now, so I can import, uh, let's say, elevation versus time and apply that to all of my uh, model uh, to represent the, the changing altitude. Um, so there's, there's some next steps for uh, seeing how the mission model would affect our operation. And by, you know, by doing this, we can really understand uh, our system and component inter in our system and component interdependence. Uh, you know, we can predict that non-nominal operation, as Jim said, and uh, through the system models, you know, we can uh, understand how how it's going to behave in a, a variety of different scenarios. And I believe uh, there is some tools within ADT's suite of products as well for uh, understanding range of operation. Uh, modeling as well. So I'll hand it back to Professor Madai. Thanks, thanks, Maz. Um, we have a movie that my colleague, uh, Dr. Lin Zhang, will take you through, um, uh, which shows really how to bring in uh, uh, some of these um, off design performance uh, variation into the design uh, optimization process. So, Luing, do you want to take over? and explain the movie. Okay, thank you. So as you can see, Murdad has listed the uh, key point for this automated workflow. And uh, we are going to look at a demo on how this uh, workflow is working in reality. So if I share my screen, uh, I will be able to share this uh, whole process with you. Uh, as Murdad mentioned earlier, we had the capability to couple the TD1 design module with the CFD solution inside ANSYS workbench. So here is the workflow and uh, both the inducer and the impeller we can design in TD1. Then the generated geometry will be passed on to the meshing module. In this case, we use the turbo grid as an example. And then the mesh will be used in a CFD setup. So we will achieve some uh, CFD prediction for higher fidelity verification. And we can also look at the cavitation performance in two-phase flow simulation. This whole workflow will be fully automated, so we can use it to study the speed line performance or varying the RPM. We can also use this workflow to look at uh, the design parametric study or a DOE or optimization. If we look at the impeller, uh, inducer part, you will see all the loading parameter Murdad explained before, uh, where we, which we use in TD1 to generate the inducer will be available to vary during the design iteration. And uh, if we go a bit further down, you will see uh, the performance parameter extracted from TD1 uh, solution uh, will be available. So people can check those uh, uh, key parameter to have some idea of this design. We can do the same for the impeller. So the loading parameter that are used to control the design available in the input and the performance parameter extracted from the TD1 flow field solution uh, can be used to evaluate the design. Uh, here we can also study the uh, impact of meridiano profile change. So we can use a few simple parameter to parameterize this meridiano shape. And when we design a stage, uh, the important thing is that when we change the dimension of one component, we want the other component to be compatible to the changes. So there's no mismatch between the two. Here we can use the expression to link the dimension of the two components. So for example, if we change the hub radius, uh, the other will be matching. We can also look at uh, the uh, leading edge zero velocity of the impeller. And uh, this is related to the uh, trailing edge velocity of the inducer. So we can uh, similarly use the expression to link the two. So when one is varying, the other will automatically get adjusted. And uh, in this way, we can study the half split between inducer and the impeller very easily. 
So now let's look at uh, uh, example of this workflow. Uh, for example, during design, we may want to explore a uh, different um, uh, design speed for this pump. And we can also vary the trading edge RVC star of the inducer to change the head state between uh, inducer and the impeller. Uh, meanwhile, you can also change the uh, tape radius of the impeller, which will uh, change the radio dimension of the stage. After we made the changes, uh, we can submit this run to the workflow. So then we will also get some CFD feedback, and uh, that's a higher fidelity prediction. If we look at this project workflow, you will see TD1 module got updated first, and then uh, the turbo grid will generate the mesh. Uh, when the CFD solution completed, uh, the final prediction will be returned to the parameter set. So we can check the CFD predicted performance of the pump stage uh, in the CFD module. If we look at uh, this uh, parameter sheet, you will find the operating condition of this uh, simulation and uh, also the height and uh, efficiency predicted by, uh, in this case, it's a two-phase flow simulation. If we look at uh, this new design in uh, post and compared to the previous design, you will notice the uh, two components uh, compatible in dimension, and we will be able to check the cavitation prediction from the uh, cavitation model. Another workflow uh, we offer in ADT is uh, this uh, TD1 design in, uh, only inside the ANSYS workbench. So in this case, we don't need a time-consuming CFD run, and this workflow is much faster. And in this method, we will be using the performance parameter from TD1 solution to do the evaluation of individual design. And uh, it's the same for the impeller. Since this workflow is uh, much faster, uh, you can explore a large design space very rapidly uh, compared to the previous one coupled with the CFD. Okay, I think now I will hand it back to Miles. Yeah, hey, this is Jim. Thanks, everybody. Uh, so what we've seen is kind of fantastic. Uh, we saw an automated, fully coupled workflow that gave us uh, the ability to simulate the envelope and push, uh, push all the edges out so we have an operational envelope of the system. That's fantastic. And then inside of that, we were able to uh, very accurately and, and, and very precisely optimize the operation of one particular component. We took one pump and we said, do this with that thing. Um, and then finally, we did the whole thing with sort of like this feedback loop that gave us a system level assurance of the success of our design, which is pretty fantastic. So gone are the days when we get to see uh, grainy uh, videos of rockets blowing up and, and these kinds of mistakes happening uh, in the public eye. In fact, now we sort of have assured system performance through the use of ADT, Flonex, and then the ANSYS tools, whether CFX, Fluid, etc. So <clears throat> now's the time we ask for some Q&A. And there's a couple, a couple questions already. I'll share them with everybody uh, to make sure everybody understands them. Um, the first question is, can you comment on the ease of connecting these tools? I, and by the way, I'd encourage Miles uh, and uh, Louis to come, off, uh, come on the video so people can see. Um, uh, can you comment on the ease of connecting these tools to ANSYS tools such as Fluent or CFX or Mechanical? Miles, I think you answered, but please uh, expand on that, please. Sure. Yeah, so um, I, could, I think you guys can see my screen here. So yeah, so. Uh, Flonex uh, is actually a tech technology partner with ANSYS. Um, so we actually have a, a pretty uh, good uh, you know, integration with, with those tools um, uh, and, and with the development of those tools on, on both sides. So the way that Flonex couples with ANSYS is from these drag and drop uh, uh, components within the Flonex environment. So um, in, in these components, you simply uh, select the reference uh, CFX, Fluent, or Mechanical project, and then choose which inputs and outputs are going to be passed between them. Um, you can either set it up to pass the variables once per iteration uh, and have some convergence criteria associated with it, or a more explicit coupling where it's once per time step. Uh, in, in either case, it does solve, uh, you know, true coupled transient 
And you can use these uh, ANSYS couplings uh, in series with the Flonex model. So if I wanted to represent a, a single pump in CFX to capture the 3D effects, I can uh, run that in series with my Flonex model where we're passing the inlet boundary conditions to CFX, uh, probably supplying a back pressure back uh, to that inlet, and then uh, ca calculating those those outlet boundary conditions, which are you know fed back as as now an inlet to Flonex, and it can actually be you know integrated into that 1D network model where we capture those 3D physics. And That's what that really allows us to do is you know capitalize on on the speed of of 1D without uh, compromising on the fidelity of using 3D modeling where we need it. Yeah, that's fantastic. Thanks for that explanation. I hope that satisfied that question. Um, and then uh, for Dr. Zingani, uh, can you design uh, inducer and impellers with splitter blades, specifically with splitters? Uh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, so um, we didn't uh, actually show show this, but it's uh, table design suite uh, does allow you to um, model both the inducer and uh, the impeller with with the splitters, or you can actually do just combine inducer impeller where the impeller has uh, a splitter blade. Okay, very cool. Thank you. Appreciate that. If that if that didn't answer the question from the person who asked it, please just pile on. That's fine. Uh, another question, I guess for yeah for anybody any of the panel. Um, turbo pumps are multi-stage. Do you just do each stage? With an ADT and Flomex, or how does it work if you have a multi-stage to get an overall performance model? Yeah, interesting question. Mal, should I go, or uh, uh, I mean, maybe you can go in terms of the um, yeah, sure. Model. So this this one came from Joe. It says, as someone who worked on the engine on that engine, I just saw months of work reduced to minutes. Turbo pump our multi-stage to couple each stage in ADT within Flonex to get overall performance. So. Uh, that would be kind of the the workflow. I think is you know uh, as you're designing this rocket engine, uh, we would go from you know operating where we're just extrapolating from that that best efficiency point to uh, developing fully fledged models for every single one of those pumps. And um, because <laughs> you know we want to minimize weight and and optimize uh, our use of space, I, I can totally imagine. That that each pump could have an, an entirely independent design that that is driven uh, by a tool like ADT. Very cool. I think uh, in terms of the um, uh, in terms of uh, I suppose from Flonex point of view, you can represent the multi-stage. I mean, as, at least that's what I can see from the the this uh, RS25 model. But in terms of uh, the actual 3D design. Uh, with Table Design Suite, what you can do and the integration with Workbench, uh, you have an option either uh, to design single stage or you can design um, uh, all three. For example, if you have, I think the, on the hydrogen side, uh, I think uh, the main uh, uh, table pump is actually has three stages. So you can actually uh, then design uh, all the three stages together. Uh, and uh, evaluate the performance of the three stage altogether. What I showed you was just inducer, impeller, and volute. But of course, if you have more components, you can represent them in a workbench. And so that is the nice thing about that workbench integration that is very flexible. Very cool. Uh, so another question. Um, what other components are supported by this workflow? For instance, could we design axial or radial turbines? So I suppose, uh, Miles, do you want to talk about, I suppose from Flonex point of view, it doesn't matter. You could have any, do you want to say a little bit about Flonex? Yeah, no, that's that's absolutely correct. So, you know, the, the whole point of, you know, integrating the system model and building these feedback loops is so that we can use this with every single component. Uh, you, can, you can use it when designing the pipes uh, for these systems is, you know, when we understand the interdependencies between you know every single component and the the outcome of the mission you know we can we can plan for success rather than you know uh, planning around a single design point and then hoping that it that is successful right 
I mean, from uh, uh, basically uh, aerodynamic, so yes, axial turbines, for example, or uh, in fact, in this um, uh, RS25 engine, there are also, we didn't go into all the different components of it, but uh, for example, uh, there is a mixed floor, uh, mixed floor to axial type uh, pump uh, on the hydrogen side uh, or oxygen side, I can't remember exactly. So we can actually model that with Turbo Design Suite. Also, axial turbine, radial turbine, but there are some novel um, uh, cycles uh, that are used, uh, not using hydrogen, but actually using a ker kerosene. And there, I think they, they, they're moving more towards radial turbines. So all of those, I think uh, uh, we can actually very similar process. We we have again a mean line design with map prediction. We have a, a 3D design with inverse design and casing design. Or uh, you can do axial uh, uh, axial uh, multi-stage uh, combination turbines. Uh, all great. of them can be modeled by the same process. And as it relates to Flonex, um, similar to how we have the you know basic centrifugal pump, and then we move to a, a more advanced model of that pump. You could do the same thing. We have, you know, a simple turbine versus, uh, you know, a full-fledged uh, turbine with a map. Uh, similar uh, thing with like compressors, uh, positive displacement pumps. So there's, there is, you know, uh, levels of fidelity which you can increase uh, as your, you know, design uh, develops. All right, uh, that was great. A great answer and a great question, by the way. Thank you. Um, uh, one last question from Bonaventure Nunes. Uh, what is the pressure ratio per stage for turbo pump applications? Uh, I suppose uh, in this particular case, the uh, rod and pressure ratio, it's the head, is the pressure rise. So I think in this case, this main oxidizer pump, uh, the head was around uh, uh, 2,200, the target head coming from the whole machine was about uh, 2,200 uh, meters. Um, uh, but there are other components, and I think probably Miles has the whole system model. And uh, they, they would actually, you would have all the basic information. For example, for example, what would it be on the main hydrogen, uh, the head on that? Yeah, so if I, if I just look at the, the oxidizer high pressure pump that we we're specifically designing here, once we have the full map for it, I can actually, you know, pull that that element result so if we're looking at the up up down uh, pressure ratio you know i can see that it's about 47 percent and if i if i want to um you know implement this in some report uh you know you can actually drag and drop this like into uh an, an embedded excel file in, in flonex um so uh I, i'm not sure exactly how how these values are going to change for uh as we you know have a more uh, developed model, but um, we can we can certainly see see what they are and, and ascertain if those are reasonable or not. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Thanks for that answer. Appreciate it. Um, so everybody, we're at the top of the hour and we've exhausted our questions as well. So, you know, today we covered optimizing engineer workflows for turbo pumps, and uh, you you can see that this uh, we could branch off into a bunch of different types of uh, turbo machinery with these tools. So um, with that. We appreciate your time. Thanks for sticking with us, all 27 of you. And uh, you can see here exactly who to contact in terms of any follow-on activities from this. And uh, we welcome your inputs. Thanks, everybody. Have a fantastic Thanks day. Thanks very much. Be good. Thank you. Bye-bye.